All right, happy, um, what is it, Tuesday, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Pat Kaplan here with your 2 p.m. update on what's going on with the tropics. We'll just start off first uh, with the outlook from the Hurricane Center, and it hasn't changed. They just came out with this update about an hour ago. We're still at 40% odds for developing. Our area to watch is still here uh, off the uh, east coast of Florida, pretty much around the Jacksonville area. Here's better color for you to see that, uh, pretty much where the X is. And so what the Hurricane Center is doing is they're keeping an eye on this feature. It's got to make it over land first. So we're not going to see any development within the next 24 hours as this stays over land. But it's once we get back over the uh, open waters of the Gulf that there's a chance that this turns into something in the next seven days. So again, they've kept the odds capped at 40%. And the reason for this is because the circulations with this system on the lower level, the mid level, the upper level, they're not stacked properly, right? So to get a healthy tropical system to develop, all of those circulations have to be stacked on top of each other. And there's been enough shear out here on the East Coast to kind of tilt that stacking. And so the storm hasn't been able to organize uh, really into an actual named storm. It's still kind of an open wave. So we'll get you in for a look at how this looks as of the 1 p.m. advisory. Still just a tropical wave. Invest 93L uh, winds at 30 miles per hour and it's moving pretty much straight west at about 10 miles per hour. And so that's going to keep it over land here again for probably the next 18 to 24 hours. You can see the wind flow around it though. Up here in Georgia, winds are coming in from the east. Lake City, they're in from the northeast. Crystal River, uh, let's see, they're coming in actually from the west. Titusville, Florida, that's the space coast out there. Winds are uh, coming in from the south. And uh, Ormond Beach also from the south. So you get the sense of that circulation. It's probably not perfectly closed yet, but it was pretty close to being at that point. And so if this had probably spent another day over open water, I think we would, would have at least gotten a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm. But what happened was this system just kind of ran out of real estate, uh, moved over land, and now we just got to sit and wait. But a lot of rain here expected for the Florida Peninsula as we go through the next, um, the next, I would say, 24 hours or so. The question then becomes, after we move over land, where does it go? So these are the spaghetti plots. We've got a, a ton of these white lines here basically indicating all different types of solutions with different computer models that we look at. And even what we do is we'll take one computer model, let's say, for example, the European model, one that we hear a lot about, and we'll make some small adjustments to the initial conditions in that model. And basically what happens is when you change those initial conditions, you get a different output. And so we'll take one model, the European model or the American model, we'll change those conditions, we'll tweak it, and we'll get a different solution. So that's what all of these lines represent, is just different solutions with different, different initial conditions uh, for this storm, just to kind of see the different possibilities that may evolve uh, over time. And you can see they're kind of all over the place. Some of them just take this into Georgia, others take it out over the Gulf. But the consensus are these black lines here in the middle, and these actually kind of take it over land. So that's a new update with this afternoon advisory. The new suite of models from this morning are finally all done running, and they're in. And they really keep it over land. And if that happens, this is not going to be a threat to anybody except for just heavy rain. And those black lines, if you can't see them, I'll highlight them for you here, still take this into New Orleans or at least into some part of southeast Louisiana and then hook it back off towards the north. We're over here, so this would keep the storm comfortably away from us here in southeast Texas. Now, that's just how things look right now. Yesterday, the models were farther south over the Gulf, and so there was a better chance that this came right towards us. That chance is still there, but just the way the computer plots look right now, it does look like this will likely Again, just the way it looks now, uh, would stay two hour east. Now, we could still get some impacts here in the form of heavy rain. Again, we don't need a hurricane uh, to move on shore here in southeast Texas for us to get tropical downpours as we get to Friday and Saturday. So let's talk about future track. This model that I'm about to show you here, this is not the European model. This is not the American model. This is our in-house future track model. It's a high resolution model. Um, the reason I'm showing this to you is because it's had a decent handle on where this would go the last few days, and it also did an exceptional job forecasting the track of Hurricane Barrel last year. So this usually has a pretty decent track record with tropical systems, and you can see it's initializing well, has the center of that circulation between Jacksonville 
and Titusville, again, the Space Coast. Uh, and so what happens is we'll kind of put it into motion from here and we'll see where it goes. And as we get into tomorrow, we expect this to come back over open water. Now, the one thing I want to point out to you is it's farther south. OK, so we've got it over open water and it's not over the panhandle. It's not riding along I-10 like those consensus models that I just showed you were hinting at. So this is a possibility that we have to keep in mind, and that's why we're not writing off the potential for this to move farther west across the Gulf and eventually towards us here in southeast Texas. We can't turn our back on this system yet. There's still a lot of uncertainty uh, on where this might go. So this model keeps it over open water as we get into tomorrow. But it doesn't really, you know, it kind of struggles here to develop into something. Notice it's kind of lopsided. Now we've got the we've got the pressure rings on here, which do look pretty symmetrical around the center. So our area of low pressure would be in here. But the rain shield around it looks very lopsided. We've got showers and storms over here. We've got showers and storms over here. And so it's not it's not a totally healthy system. You know, we're not looking down the barrel of a, of a hurricane here. But if this were to spend time over water, like this model is suggesting, a tropical storm is not out of the question. So the time frame on this, look to the top right, Thursday. So now what happens after Thursday? Well, this model keeps it over water and keeps it kind of chugging towards the west, but it does start to hook it up into central southwestern Louisiana. So maybe not the New Orleans area, but just to the west. Now, the way that this model is depicting the storm, because it's still lopsided, is that we get a lot of tropical moisture here on the southwestern fringe of it. And that would mean some pretty good downpours, some good, pretty good tropical downpours for us here in the Houston area in southeast Texas. Again, time frame on that would be Friday. So the timing idea hasn't changed with this. We're still expecting impacts to us here in southeast Texas in that Friday to Saturday time frame. The question though is, we gotta get into the granular details. Does it become a storm? Does it go into Louisiana? Does it keep going west uh, across the Gulf of Mexico? So right now, based on what I'm seeing with this model, with the other uh, model plot lines I just showed you, I think there's a chance that this goes somewhere in this envelope. And um, so it does still stay to our west or to our east rather, but I do think that we could see impacts from this on the western side. So again, heavy downpour is not out of the question for us on Friday. All right, let's take a look at uh, computers uh, not responding. There we go. Uh, let's take a look at what's steering this because I think that's a big part of this equation, right? We're talking about where is it going to go? Well, we got to look at what's steering this. There's a large area of high pressure out over the Atlantic, right? So here's the east coast, here's Florida, here we are here in Houston, just to get your bearings. There's a lot of blue on the map. And this is all the ocean, all out here. So we've got high pressure out over the ocean. Our little disturbance here is kind of existing within a weakness between two highs. We've got one area of high pressure that's moving in for us in the middle of this week. That's, that's bringing us the drier weather. We're not going to see a lot of rain chances. And you have this giant area of high pressure out here over the Atlantic. So our system is existing within that weakness. As we go through the next few days, that weakness will tend to shrink a little bit and that high starts to become a little more intense and it kind of follows it. Now the high to the west will just get absorbed into this high. So now you get this big ridge, okay, that's going to emerge from the Atlantic and it kind of rides up and over that low. And that's the tricky part. As long as that ridge is there, this low can't go north. Okay, it's got to keep going west. So the question is, do we get a weakness in that ridge that allows that system to track north and eventually move on shore? Or does the high stay strong enough and keep pushing this system to the west? So this is the European solution. And you can see there is a little bit of a weakness here kind of carved out, but the high really starts to dominate as we get into Friday. So still a lot of unknowns. That's why we can't really give you a definite answer. How strong does the system get? Where does it go? Does it even develop? Uh, and the reason, the reason for that is twofold. One, we don't really have a well-defined area of circulation yet. 
Uh, and two, it's over land right now. So we got to wait for it to get back over water. Does it get back over water? You know, and if it does get back over water and it redevelops an area, a closed area of circulation, that's when the models are going to get into a really fast agreement on what happens. The reason why there's so much disagreement is because we don't have that low level area of circulation over open water right now. So still some unknowns, but the possibilities range from the Florida Panhandle probably to us here in East Texas. I know that's a wide envelope, but we're still four days out from having uh, a potential uh, for impacts here in Southeast Texas. So we do have some time. Water temperatures are not going to be a problem for this though. Uh, west coast of Florida, the numbers are mid to upper 80s. The threshold is 80 degree water. We're well above that. I mean, it's July here in the Gulf. In fact, as you get into the coastal waters here uh, from Mississippi, or really from Alabama out through uh, Louisiana, we've got those uh, that pink showing up on the map. That's where water temperatures are over 90 degrees. So plenty of warmth here in the Gulf. Even up towards southeast Texas, we've got water temperatures, middle and upper Texas coast in the mid to upper 80s. So plenty of fuel. What could be a limiting factor? We always have to look into the upper parts of the atmosphere, right? So at the surface, we got plenty of warm water, but what's happening upstairs? Well, right now, again, remember what I talked about at the very beginning of this video, or maybe you didn't catch the beginning of the video. The lower level circulation is decoupled from or disconnected from the mid level circulation. There's two areas of circulation with tropical systems. They have to be perfectly stacked for a storm to actually mature and get going. We don't have that right now. The low level circulation kind of ran away and moved on shore while the mid level circulation is a little farther south. The reason for that is this wind shear coming in from the north. OK, so your low level circulation is over here, but your mid level circulation got pulled over here. So they're decoupled and that's why we don't have a healthy system because there's just enough wind shear out over the uh, east coast of Florida to kind of decouple these things. As we go through the next few days, here's our system back over open water continues to push towards the west. And here we continue to see the presence of wind shear coming in from the east coast and traveling through the Gulf. And so I think that is also going to be a hindrance with this system from becoming super strong. If it were to stay over water and if it were to get organized, I, I think the likelihood of us seeing a hurricane at this point, just in how this looks, is on the lower side. So that's the good news. That being said, you don't need a hurricane to get impacts. I mean, we get you get tons of fresh water flooding from rainfall just from tropical waves, which is what this uh, is right now. So there is some winter possible late in the week, but I still think we're going to see heavy rain for the Gulf Coast states over the next uh, three to five days. Um, so bottom line, what do you do now as the viewer at home? Monitor the forecast daily because things will change, especially now that this system's over land and going to reemerge over open water. Once it gets back over the Gulf, I mean, then it's it's game on. We got to see what happens. Take this as a moment to just kind of refresh yourself on your evacuation plan, your hurricane plan. Do you have a kit together? Is everything kind of stocked up? You know, we went through a storm last year. Did you use materials last year that you have to replenish before we deal with a storm this year? And we're going to be doing these updates here on KHO 11 plus several times a day. We got one right now at two o'clock. Uh, the next one comes up at 630. Then we'll do one at 8 p.m. So we'll have plenty of updates for you. As soon as we get them, you're going to get them. This is not that a panic about. This is not a big storm system that we're, we're overly concerned of, but it is something that we're not able to turn our back on yet. So stay with us for the updates. We'll be posting them here. We'll be doing live videos. We'll be doing it obviously on TV as well. I'll, I'll come to you at uh, four o'clock. The KHOU 11 News at four o'clock for the update there. Uh, and we'll be posting on social media as well. So keep an eye on this and uh, enjoy the rest of, uh, of your day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.